lot of people don't understand um, why so many pubs closed over such a short period of time, starting a few years ago, um, what would have led to, to, to that situation, but it didn't start a few years ago. It started really um, in 1989 when legislation was changed. Uh, something called the beer orders were brought in, and it was brought in by, by a, as an anti-competition, an anti-monopoly measure. The larger brewers owned thousands of pubs, and they sold their own brands through the pubs. Even the local brewers owned pubs um, in Liverpool. It was Higgs, and they had quite a lot of pubs. And it was, uh, and even today, pubs are seen as either either real ale pubs or the sports bars or whatever. At the time, pubs were controlled by a brewer, and they were, and, and they sold all their products through them. This was seen as um, against competitiveness. If, if a new brewery started up, for example, they'd find it difficult to get their beer into a pub. Um, but on the back of that, the brewery. It, it was a retail warehouse for, for, for their product, so the product was cheap um, relatively, relative to say off-license sales, there was maybe a 30 or 40% difference between a can of lager and a pint of lager, or a can of bitter and a pint of bitter, whereas now it's probably maybe six, seven, eight times more expensive to buy one in a pub. How did that happen? Um, well, what happened was, the idea was, under the legislation, was that the brewers would break up and become two separate entities, property management and, and a brewer. They, they couldn't own the outlets anymore. I think they couldn't own more than a certain amount, I can't remember exactly how many it was. They, this was greeted with, a, initially, people were excited about it because they assumed it would become more of an owner-manager uh, situation. Like you've got an island where you've got great pubs where people look after them and, and can do what they want in them because they're, they're normally free old situations. But what happened was, uh, Cartels got together and bought huge swathes of the pubs. So you had brewers separate from property management companies. The reality was the property management companies that owned the pubs were actually set up by the brewers. And so they organised these kind of leases, um, which were then given to either the incumbent manager or were sold to people who wanted to be in the pub. And these leases would, would tie you to a, to a range of products. But the range of products was then selected between the, the, the major brewers. So all of a sudden the pubs started selling more, more variety. Now the thing is, this worked well for a short while uh, because the, the, the competition element was satisfied. The, the, the problems um, were that um, th there was many of these property management companies and uh, as with most situations, they bought each other out until there was two main players who owned the vast majority of pubs in the UK. And so uh, they've got, neither got, have, have got interest in brewing anymore. F it, it was long ago that they, uh, that they severed the ties with the breweries. And so the property management streams are three main income streams. One of them is assignments of putting new leases on. The other one's property rental. And the other one's the tie, which is you've got to buy your beers from these people once you get into bed with them. Uh, the first one, the assignment one, is quite strange. For all the way through the 90s when, and the and 2000s when it was very easy to get older money. An awful lot of people wanted to earn their own pub. And you could easily go to the bank and get 50 grand, 60 grand, 70 grand, 80 grand to get money to start to take a lease off a company. Uh, and most people who wanted to do that weren't, didn't know the figures, didn't know the sums, they just had a dream, they wanted to own a pub and they would get the pub and the pub would be in a situation which could never possibly make any money. The brewer, um, well the, sorry, the property management companies, they didn't care because they knew in six months someone else would take it. So they get 50,000 every time and then six months later they get another 50,000. This was, this had a name in the industry called The Chain, it's still called The Chain. The chain doesn't happen anymore because since 2008 you can't get money anymore <laughs> to, 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 get a, to get a lease. But it was a, a deliberate policy to, to make money out of people by making it an impractical situation where the, the rents were too high, the beer costs were too high, it was never going to make money but they were going to churn unsuspecting and not business people who've just got a dream to have a pub through them. That's one of the ways they made money. Another way was the rent which is just what the, whatever the terms of the lease are and the other way is the tie. Within the lease, within the instrument it says that the, uh, that the, the tie is all about bring in the benefits of their massive purchasing power to you so you share in the in the in the cost savings which is a complete farce because the tie actually means that you can you could if you were allowed to buy outside of the tie you would buy the beers an awful lot cheaper the financial crisis happened um, towards the end of the last decade until that time the share price of the property management companies had gone through the roof and 
they'd gone from being small businesses to huge businesses that were worth billions. And that during that period, the, the whole of the businesses were remortgaged to pay off as bonuses uh, and massive salaries for the, for the executives. And there was lots of them at it. The thing, the thing, the thing that happened next was the property market crashed. So they've, they've gone from a share price of around, well, well over ten pounds to around fifty pence where they linger now. The problem is that they took out three billion pounds worth of uh, loans to pay for acquisitions that failed, or just, a, or just loans to pay out in dividends to the shareholders while the going was good. The difficulty now is that they don't get the chain because people can't borrow the money anymore, and they um, also. And the, the, the rents aren't coming in because the, the, the pubs are shutting all the time. So what the, the only access to additional funds is to increase the price of the beers. And so people are wondering why beer is so, much, so expensive in pubs now. It's very simple. Beer now costs to uh, someone working under the terms of one of these leases 30% more than it did two or three years ago because it's the one thing in the contract that they can't do anything about. Um, the, the rentals are, are, have got to go up by RPI or by a, a measure of profit. Um, the assignments are all done, but the tie, they can, they can sell the beer for exactly what they want and then you, you're tied to get it that way. Uh, so it, it's killing the golden goose and so the, the, the price of the beer has gone right through the roof in these establishments which make up the majority of pubs, whereas the likes of Weatherspoons can, don't have the burden of three billion pounds worth of debt. So, so that's where we are. Um, the problem is that the whole of, of, the, of the industry is, is strangled by this debt. Um, this debt, which has already been taken out, you know, if you look at, the, at an estate um, of the pubs, every pub on average owes forty thousand a year just to service the debt. Most pubs rent to that; the entire rent is going just in debt. So that's why the, the tie is so much. If, 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 if a landlord's ordering one hundred and fifty thousand pounds worth of beer, a third of it is it's just for debt costs. And so, if he sells fifty thousand drinks a year, one pound of every one of those drinks. Is going to service a debt, and until that debt bubble's resolved, th th there is no real way out of the situation. So the, the pub codes have either got to fold, or the bondholders have got to revise their expectations of the debt repayments. Um, or, or you know, the, what, what's happening is that the, the pubs are being sold off on the drift, so the free older owner model is there. But the, the thing with that is, it just transfers the debt really. If a, if a pub manager manages to get a loan of half a million pound and buy the free old out, then they've got to pay that half a million pound back, so it's still a debt, whichever way you look at it.